Barrel House Blues, Robert Shaw, and Evening With. And that little number is called the Saturday Night Special. Saturday right? Night Special. That's just a taste of the Barrel House Blues, which you're going to be hearing a lot more of tonight. In fact, Robert Shaw, this fellow who grew up in a small cattle town just outside of Houston, Texas, but has made Austin his home for about the past 40 years. And for more than the past 50 years, he's been playing that style of Barrel House Blues music on the piano. We're going to try to compress all of those years into this program, if that's possible and we'll at least spend a part of an evening with Robert Shaw. I'm Terry Lacona, along with Cheryl Jefferson, and a lot of Robert's friends are also here with us tonight, and if there are some people who are not friends of Robert's, I'm sure they will be by the time this program is over with. Cheryl? Well, Robert, your music has been described as Barrel House Blues. Mm -hmm. What's the Barrel House? What is Barrel House Blues like, huh? <laughs> well, I, I, I believe I can explain that to you. You know, uh, when I was a youngster growing up, the housewives, their husband would go down to, they called them saloons in these days, but they changed the name of them as the rails go along. They called them package stores now and bottle shops. And, uh, and they drank down there and they'd get drunk, you know. He'd have some people was working for him. He'd pay them people off, but he'd be down there getting drunk. <laughs> well, the people, what, his hands, you know, would work for him, would go there looking for him and say, Oh, says John is down at that old barrel house. But they shipped all the whiskey to the saloon in barrel. They mixed it all up fifths and what was full quarts then mm -hmm. and pints and half a pint they'd put a straw of whiskey and, and then they'd put a straw in there between those bottles and pack it and when the ship it would be on a local train wasn't no cars much them and they just a few cars I maybe mean, you'd go all day before you see a car maybe <laughs> one and uh, they'd get the fellas to help unload it off the freight car and then they would put it on a spring wagon to a horse and carry it over to the saloon and unpack it, but the ship in barrel, and that's why the old housewives call it barrel house when you go down and get drunk. Then he come home and get his pistol and go back and ride his horse in the store and shoot up on top of the house. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> that's, when, that's where the barrel house. <laughs> so they were called barrel houses and road houses and what well, kind of the, places? Well, the saloons, they called them barrel houses because the, the whiskey was shipped to the saloon in barrels. Mm -hmm. And they had them lined all up along the walls, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right along the wall. And you were a piano player at one of those places it's like that? It's the roadhouse, and now we get it another place altogether. <laughs> See, they sold the whiskey at, at the saloon, and down at the roadhouse, they made the home brew, mm -hmm. and they got the, and they made the whiskey too, because it was in Prohibition time. There was, a, there was a number that you used to play back in those days, and lots of other piano players used to play it too, called Hattie Green. Hattie Green? What Hattie Green from Abilene, right? Tell off a half a yard of that nonsense. What you say? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a girl, her name Hattie Green. 
I've got a girl, her name, Hattie Green. She's from a town out west they call Avalon. Some of yours, I'll give you some of mine. How'd you ever come from that cattle ranch, your father's cattle ranch near Houston, to playing the piano? Oh, it was beautiful. You know what that was? I used to, I used to ride them bucking horses and bulls in a rodeo. Man, I'd go anywhere to the rodeo because he couldn't do it. But I went to a dance one night and I caught one of them pretty gals and she was much easier to hold in them bulls. And man, I, <laughs> I, I, I said, come on, we going to get some bulls. I said, no, I didn't find something better than that. All right, so where's, where, where's the piano come in there? And so I went on, well, that's why I went, they had been going to these roadhouses and seeing them girls, oh man, when they get to jump in there, man, and them little dresses and shaking there, man, I stood there and looked at them all night. So uh, I, I went, to, I see them fellas playing the piano, oh, oh, oh man, and them girls were just hugging them and oh, daddy, and I said, ooh, I wish that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, man, I went back, it wasn't too long, my little old boy, you know, when I was growing up, I was about nine, ten years old, my mom bought a piano. Man, I got in there, bim, 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 I couldn't do nothing. I just, oh, and my, so she was taking my sister to music, you know, and I had a sister who was older than I, just a year. So, I would get up in the morning around three o'clock and hitch up, we had fine horses and to the buggy and they'd take the buggy and go to the streetcar line about eight miles and going on into Houston, and then they'd come back, they'd get back home by five o'clock. They wouldn't let me in there where she was taking lessons at. Mm -mm, no, they wouldn't let me in there, make me go outdoors. I'd go under the house, <laughs> and I'd get that sound, I couldn't <laughs> hold it, and by the time she quit and they'd go somewhere, and I'd go in there, I'd be done forgot the sound. So finally one day, uh, I said, I'm gonna just play anyhow. So something come up then, but I got to land, and I went to Galveston, and I went to one of them big party houses, that's in Prohibition time. And man, I got beaten on that piano, and here come, ooh, man, a pretty gal out there. Looked like one of my Alberta peaches. The one man never bit. <laughs> and man, she was, oh, man, and I was just banging that away. And so I finally got on a little bit before I left there. Well, now there was one number that used to really get him going. It was called uh -huh. Sandy Feet. Sandy Feet. Remember huh? how that goes? Yes, I showed it. <laughs> Dirty, dirty duck and drum. 
Yeah, I come, baby, with my dirty, dirty duckings on. You know about that, baby, I ain't gonna be home. I guess we could say that you've traveled around some in your life, haven't you? Quite a bit. And probably one of the first times that you got to traveling was when you left Houston and went on up to Kilgore and Conroe and spent some time up there playing at some of the roadhouses. And not too long after that, you found your way on up to Oklahoma City and Kansas City and on up to Chicago. What were you doing up there, especially in Kansas City back around the 20s? It must have been quite a hot time. Yeah, it was, it, Kansas City was very hot then. It was a sexy town, jazzy town. It was, oh, it was really hot. And you were just a Texas boy who had uh, never Texas been in the big Never town. had been there before in my life. And the first acquainted I had a chance to do it, I got, got acquainted. First somebody I got acquainted with was outlaw. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't know it, but I, I, I figured my way around. I didn't take too big a chance, but he was a nice fella. And, uh, but he made quite a present for me. He fixed me somewhere to sleep and... Uh, and he fed me, and when some of these was hard to get people, I'm telling y'all, y'all don't know, it was pitiful in 1930 and 29. You, everybody you see was standing up just like y'all sitting here. I mean, everybody. Everybody you saw. Uh, and a lady, and her and her husband would, a uh, washing would be a dollar and a half, and they had a bundle and a half ton pickup, so couldn't haul it, and it wasn't but a dollar and a half to do that, washing and ironing. Oh, it's pitiful. So I used to play music up there at some of the, they didn't call them clubs back then, did they? places like well, Kansas City. Well, yeah, some of them they did. They call them cabarets and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what did you used to get paid for playing a full night's worth of music? Now, a full night of, at, that, at that time, I, mean, I played a lot of nights for 50 cents and something to eat. It, it sounded bad, but it was good. That was good money. And it, oh. <laughs> well, you know, salt bacon was three cents a pound. <laughs> and you get a two, three pound of pork chop for 25 cents. <laughs> but where were you going to get the 25 cents? Yeah. That was a problem. Yeah. Well, I guess it was a lot easier getting it from playing music than doing almost anything else. It's just about it. If you forget in a locality where a lot of, you know, uh, drinking and gambling and stuff in those parts of town, that's the only thing was in, was active in those days. That's the only thing where a little money was. And if you could fit in anywhere along there, you could probably get older a little bit. Robert Sherrill was talking to you before about, about the Santa Fe Railroad and about mm -hmm. a lot of the songs that you were playing back then that had to do with the railroads. Mm -hmm. And when you traveled around in those early days, you wouldn't have gotten anywhere if you didn't have the railroads to it's ride true. on. No, I wouldn't have gotten nowhere. There was one song called The Mobile and the KC Line. Uh, I think the railroad's yeah. long since gone, but That's right. the song's still run, around. Run, even run into Fordway, Mobile and the KC Line. We went down on them lines, and this is a Mobile and the KC Line. the KC line Ever go 
down On the mobile and the KC line I want to ask you Did you see that girl of mine? She ain't good looking She don't dress too fine She ain't good looking She don't dress too fine When she starts her loving She always takes her time I've got holes in my pockets, babe Shoes so done was thin as a dime I've got holes in my pockets, babe Shoes so was thin as a dime That I've been loving Don't pay me no mind Someday I'm going to get lucky, baby. Things is going to be coming my way. Someday I'm going to get lucky, baby. Things is going to be coming my way. I'm going to have money in my pocket. I'm going to change clothes every day. Thank you all very much. How much time did you spend out of Texas before you came back home? I stayed up around two, three years. Or longer. And the thing that wised me up, I had been in Chicago and I come back out of Chicago into Kansas City and they had a, a, a place what they called the Panama Cabaret on 18th Street and Foyce. And I walked in there, I'm coming back out of Kansas City now, back to Oklahoma City because it's time for me to be back at this station because I was just off on the vacation time because I'd been playing there a good long while. And I walked in, and they, they carried all the people. They carried the thugs, they carried the low-income people, and then they carried the middle-class decent people, and they had the, the real sophisticated people. But it was on first, second, third, and fourth floor. Well, when I walked in on the first floor, I seen as much as 50 or 60 old men in there, and water was running out their shoe soles, and they had on an old overcoat, and that was their bed in their house. And you know they made some money somewhere. All that life, and they were around 75 years old. And I bet you it's 50 of them in there. What was it like up on the fourth floor? It's a little bit better. No, but more, no, not on the fourth on the floor. That's the, show, that's the real thing. You ever heard that song about, <laughs> you may not angel, but be an angel, but angels are so true, but until the day that one come along, I'll string along with you? Well, that was the real <laughs> thing up there. Now, on, <laughs> on the second floor, <laughs> 
<laughs> on the second floor was just above the average, you understand. But on the third floor, you was kind of getting up in high cotton, but you was on top when you got up on the fourth floor. <laughs> so you came back down to Texas and you spent some time in Fort Worth, didn't you? Played sure, at, yeah. a, at a hotel down there. Mm -hmm. And back around that time in the 30s, it must have been a good time for the blues. Yeah. And the Texas blues, as a matter of fact, was one of the songs that you were playing back then. Yeah. Texas blues. Well, how's that go anyway, Robert? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Texas blues. Some come and cry, some coming about to scream. Oh, some come and cry, some are coming about to scream. Everybody hollering mercy, what do mercy mean? up this morning, baby, with the same thing on my mind. I woke up this morning, baby, had the same thing on my mind. I couldn't talk for laughing. I couldn't laugh for crying.
She's mine, she's yours And she's somebody else's too She's mine, she's yours And she's somebody else's too She done got low down she want to do that one, Robert. Put me in daddy. Right. Now, there were a lot of piano players back around that time, back around when you got your start. You were playing around Houston and Galveston and on mm -hmm. up to Oklahoma City and Kansas City. Well, whatever ever happened to them? They all died. <laughs> they, 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 they live all, they live nine days to the week. <laughs> <laughs> you see that number though, I just got to play. Now, that number, they call it, put me in daddy. Now, Bessie Smith come out of that number 1920, 1919. I don't know. Put me in daddy. Oh, she was a bad girl, I'm telling you for sure. She upset this world. She started all that stuff doing that wax. Put me in that. How come you gave up playing the piano as far as making a living at it? Well, I, it, it, it got bad you... just like everything else gets bad. Yeah. yeah. It's got bad. Now, we, we played all night for two bits and, and something to eat and then 50 cents and it went up a little high and then it got practically got out of nothing. And then you had to start something else. I don't care what you start in life, a panic will hit it. It was pretty hard living, too, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty hard living. So that's about the time that you decided to give up playing piano for yeah, a living. You'd have to go so far. You'd have to spend $50 worth of time and, and, and money if you had any, and you didn't have none, to go somewhere to try to get over the 50 cents. Mm -hmm. it, the panic hit it. So you came to Austin at around that time. I came through. I was going through Austin, and they ain't got where I was going yet. <laughs> I was going home. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got that yet. There's um, nice people around this town. They made things so pleasant. I got a good cool drink of water when I got yet something to eat and just kept eating and I wasn't go when my breakfast get where my dinner ought to be, I ain't gonna be there long, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Robert, uh -huh. recently, well, in recent years, your type of music has regained popularity uh -huh. and you made a trip to Canada. Uh -huh. Tell us about it. Oh, that was wonderful. But I just couldn't talk. I was uh, out, of, out of class. And they were talking French, and I didn't know nothing, but I was angry, and they were over me, but it was a wonderful trip. That's but, in 1971, uh, when but, you went up to Expo? Uh, but what it really did get me, there was a girl run up to me, and uh, she worked out there, it was uh, 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 working with the, with the gates out there, and so she worked at the ticket office, and she said, oh, Robert, say, you got to write up in the paper that morning. I said, what? Say, you got to write up, say, get the paper. Well, they had the paper that you building wouldn't hold them paper. They had paper them everywhere. <laughs> and I got the paper. I, she told me what to get. And when we use one E, they use three. <laughs> and I couldn't read that. <laughs> so I carried it to her. And she read it to me. Well, well, the way she read it, 
she could speak both of the languages. I couldn't speak but one. We was all out of harmony. So <laughs> I could just only speak the English with her. And, and it worked out all right. She told me what was on there, but I couldn't read the people. Where did you play in Canada? Well, in at the Expo World. building. Where? They got a, a, a Expo building there where they had the, uh, the World's Fair in Montreal. And that was... It, if, I, if I'm right, that was sponsored by the Smithsonian, Smithsonian Institute. Institution. So you were a part of their program yeah, that they had program. there at, at the Expo I'm liable to Montreal. get a letter in the morning, and, and I'll be sitting at such a place and sitting at such a date. When you were there in, in Canada, did you play the Pine Top Oogie Woogie? I believe I did. I sure did, yeah. You feel up to playing that Yeah, tonight? and everyone wanted to take me to Boston when I played that number. I believe I tried it. <laughs> now, this is a real thing, Pine Top Oogie Woogie. Outside. I need one good drink to make me warm inside. House catch a fire and ain't no water around. Throw the jug of whiskey out the window and let the shag burn down. Those pines up. It's over now. Get ready and hold yourself. Now stop. Top in. Now when I say stop, I mean stop. Don't move a pig. When I say shake that thing, I want all of y'all to mess around. Get ready to hold yourself. Okay. <laughs> 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 
What what was it like when you played that at about three or four o'clock in the morning at one of these oh, road houses? Oh man, I was floating around. I was just floating. <laughs> oh, and them girls could sure do it too. And I tell them to hold the stuff. Oh man, you see them stop, you know, and tighten up like that, and then the hips go to jump like two pigs in a sack. Man, I'm telling you, they sure cutting up. They had a good time. Robert, we were, we were talking about the trip that you took up to Canada in 1971 when you played at Expo in Montreal. In 1973, you went, uh, went over to Europe. I don't know if you'd ever been over there before. And you played at the Berlin Jazz Festival. And you were playing in between people like Count Basie and Earl Father Hines and oh, Oscar man. Peterson. Yeah, I'm telling you, they really shook me up up there, but I come through. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, when we... <laughs> very much. But you know, I come up, I didn't have his, uh, right behind Oscar Peters. And the drummer, he had a, a, a fiddle, I mean a bass fiddle with him. Mm -hmm. I come up right behind. You didn't have anybody backing you up. No, they didn't have back nobody but the left hand. <laughs> <laughs> and when I come back out there, they told me, said, man, you cut a hog. I said, what? He said, man, you sounded good. And I said, sure enough. And that's I was Earl Hines standing right there, Father Hines. I go, oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I stayed in there, and I never had such a wonderful time. Those people give me such a They're nice people over there. They're wonderful people. And when we got to Berlin, when I walked in there and, and was registering for the hotel, and they said, what's your name? Your name? No, I, had, I signed my name on the hotel slip and handed it to him. He said, your name Robert Shaw? said, yeah, it is. He went back there to the, the post office back there and gave me three letters and i know nobody over there in man now you could have bought me for nothing yet i said nobody got no business i didn't know i had some fans you know that sent from other parts of the country had sent these letters to this they know that next stop with when i got to berlin is this is the sign those cards and send them back to them and they sent the zeal staff and everything else in it but that showed it upset me i didn't know what the world that's gonna happen over there i said don't nobody over here know me <laughs> well, there was there was a, a waitress that you ran into over there that oh. kept referring to you as the Piggly Wiggly Man, didn't you? <laughs> Ooh, she was a beautiful girl, <laughs> and they all wore black. That was in Sw in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. We went down there one night after we got through. We got through about two, and all them invitation they come around late in the night around 12 1 o'clock we go down to this place and so this escort was with us you know talk english and uh, their language too carried us down to this big fine hotel and everything and they had a big bar in there and all oh, they had those little red seats like this and man it was eight or ten inches thick when you sit down man you just go to sleep <laughs> so he said and the fellow asked saying you got your musicians said, yes sir, i got two or three over there it was three piano players in the bunch so he said robert I said, oh my goodness, I said, yeah. He said, come here. He said, play a number two. And so I told him what I was fixing to play when I got ready to play. And so when I, when I played a number about Piggly Wiggly. And this girl couldn't speak a word of English. And, 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 and I played that piece that night. And when we were leaving there the next morning, next night, and we went down there to eat, she said, oh, say that man Piggly Wiggly. Said, <laughs> she was talking English just that quick. We sure had a lot of fun there. But that's what you're talking, Piggly Wiggly? Yeah, let's hear yeah, the let's Piggly, hear Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly. Let's hear Piggly Wiggly.
Mama told me. Papa told me to. If I had a left son, do what my mama said. I had a left son, do what my mama said. I wouldn't have had such a hard time in this world today. I'm leaving you now, babe. You're one of the few people that plays barrel house music. Well, you're the only one that I know of. Is there any reason why you kept your music so pure without adapting to the style of music that they play now or say in the 40s and the 50s? That's a good question. <laughs> I tell you, music is a thing you can't be but one. It has a lot of phrases in it. Now, if you're a jazzinette, you're a jazzinette. If you're a blues specialist, you're a blues specialist. You really haven't changed your style much no, at all, obviously, since those days. Uh, well, it has done wonders for me. I couldn't have wondered it. I, I couldn't have guessed what it's done wonders to keep my style. Had you ever thought that your music, your style of music, would get as popular as it is right now? You have quite a following. Well, I tell you, it's just like a, anything else that it would. It's just down to earth music, just pure D music. So you moved to Austin around, what, 1930, 1931? Oh, I, I moved, I came through here in 30. I stayed a while. Done all for good, but I wanted to go to the big show. And I kept, I stayed here a while, about six, eight months, and then I went on up. And then, man, I done, I tied this town so hot, I couldn't sleep, man. I'd have to hide to sleep. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> people, it wasn't me to do And there's a lot of party houses, you know, bootleg whiskey, you know? And the way they'd sell it, you know, they, they, they set a pitcher of whiskey right here by the zinc. You know, that law had a good way of breaking in on you late in the night, you know, around 12, 1 o'clock, and they keep the pitcher of whiskey sitting, yeah. And if the laws go to the back door and the front door, and they push the door open, bam, he got to have something to take the coat. <laughs> See, that's just the end of it. <laughs> All them people were messing with that whiskey. And some of your best of families are supposed to be, well, that's the only way they could make any money. They sold that whiskey. Mm -hmm. You go there one or two o'clock in the night, they're in that part, and 10 or 15 of them, part of the breeze, two bits of hand pipe. And it was definitely against the law back then. <laughs> that was during the Prohibition days. That's right. But you gave up playing at the roadhouses and, and playing out of places like that, and you came here and you <laughs> opened up an ice house and a grocery store in Austin called Stop and Swap, right? <laughs> Stop and Swap. And you had a piano and a domino game set mm -hmm. up in the back. 
And I'll bet you had as many people coming in to hear you play piano yes, as, right as you did to buy groceries. Oh, good to tell you do nothing sometimes. When they did didn't you? want to meet. They want to play the piano for them. When did you convert the place from a grocery store into a barbecue place? Well, I had a, a white fella. He, he moved in this town, and he was a stranger. And he come down there one day and bought some barbecue. I had, it had a good taste, but I had cheap meat. And he said, Sean? I said, yeah. So let me tell you something. He said, if you go down to some of them, I was trying to do it on big scales, uh, give you a whole lot for a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. He said, the meat house didn't get you some real good meat. He said, I believe you'll do a whole lot better. He bought a little barbecue for me every day for two bits 30 cents. I gave you a piece bigger than your head there for 15 cents. <laughs> it's still cheap. I went down there like he told me. I always take good advice. I take it out. And, and I bought, I told him, give me some good meat. And uh, I got a good number one grade, and I took that meat home and cooked it. And accidentally, somebody come by and bought two bits of 30 cents worth. And he was gone about an hour and a half, and he was back. It don't take me long to catch on up. <laughs> so, oh, no, something happened here. <laughs> and I was selling at that time when I closed up at night, I had 65 cents in money. And I had a piece of meat by <laughs> piece of it. And about two weeks, I would had five and six dollars in my cigar box. Mm -hmm. And then I know in the thing, I was up twenty-five and thirty dollars a day with that barbecue. And I kept fooling around there, and I got up to seventy-five and a hundred dollars a day. And shooting and after a little bit, I was tapping eight hundred, nine hundred dollars a day with that barbecue and gross. And then I went on further than that, around twenty-five hundred a day. <laughs> You still sell any barbecue? Huh? No, I quit here. <laughs> that's a good friend of mine right back there. He can tell you all about it. He's right there. And this is what he had to do. He tell you about this barbecue. All them people know that. I was known all over this town. And I cooked a lot for the university out here. When I, I take, run into heart attack in 65, and I had eight or ten takers with about 30, 40 pounds apiece for this TCU game here. And that fella told me, the doctor said, I got to take you to the hospital. I said, man, you can't take me. I said, I got to take it for the university. I got to get to take you. He said, man, you got to go. <laughs> and he carried me on. He popped me in the neck there with something and knocked me out and, 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 and take me on the hospital. But them takers was done. They got the takers on. They went on. I had them ready. Oh, that show was some pretty stuff. Oh, man, great big old thing. <laughs> How much longer you think you're going to be playing? You know, you can't tell about that music. You have to wonder if your health holds up. You can't tell about it. Cause no, when it get a part of it, just get old to you. And sometimes I can be sitting down, and my fingers will start that. Just, just sitting down. Uh -huh. I can get up and go and play a tune or two. That's all it is. You just have a, a, a jittery nerve, something like that. Well, Robert, we got about four or five minutes we left have. to play tonight, yeah. and that's about it. <laughs> and before we close out, we'd like to thank you for coming down here to spend at least part of the evening with us. And I think that goes for everybody else here. Yeah. And we do thank all of y'all for coming. Yeah, baby, let me see you do the mess around. Oh, run, yeah, baby, let me see you do the mess around. I can see now, baby, both hips ain't going round and round.
Baby, down in a dirty shame. It's low down. Baby, down in a dirty shame. I got a brand new baby. I'm afraid to call her name. Don't cry after I'm gone Just remember me, baby, when I'm six feet of cold, cold ground. Remember me, baby, when I'm six feet of cold, cold ground. Always remember and just say he was a good man, but he done gone down.
my mother died. Yeah, and it wasn't so long ago. My mother died.